What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of a Tech once again, and today we're going to go ahead and do a vlog style sort of here. I essentially have been looking at capturing Xbox One video and then analyzing it to de determine the frame rate and then resolution, or uh, what should I say, effective or native resolution it's currently running. And I've run into a lot of issues. So today, first, we're just going to talk about what I'm trying to do and what I've tried so far. And if you guys have any uh, ideas, leave them in the comment section below. <laughs> to get things started, I do know that the first thing we had to do or the first thing that we needed to figure out was how to capture a lossless video from the Xbox One onto my PC. To do this, I did find that you can do lossless video with the Elgato HD60 Pro, which is the PCI slot. It's PCI times four slot. Now there is a caveat to that. The lossless video is going to be at 60 FPS here. And we'll talk about why that matters a little bit down the line. But if you guys are interested in capturing lossless 60 FPS with the HD60 Pro, I can show you how here in just a second. So you're going to want to get an application called Virtual Dub, which you can get from virtualdub.sourceforge.net. While you could possibly or theoretically go ahead and use OBS lossless mode to do this, Virtual Dub offers a lot more options that are going to make it more capable of not only capturing the lossless image, but also going back in Virtual Dub and verifying that the image itself was lossless as well. So once you get Virtual Dub, you can actually just go to your downloads here and you will see that it comes in a zip file. Now, quick note, you'll see that I downloaded the 64-bit twice here and unzipped it. And I have to give you guys a warning here that the 64-bit does not work very well. So you're not going to want to do that. You're going to want to go ahead and grab the 32-bit version. This is on a system that's running a Titan X Pascal and a Ryzen 1800X. But you'll just ex extract uh, virtual dub, and I've actually just extracted it here to my desktop. So on my desktop, you'll see that I have the virtual dub folder, and then I have the virtual dub application. The first thing you're going to do is just go ahead and open it up, and then you will click the audio and you'll just click no audio. Next, you're going to want to go under the options menu and select performance. So you're going to want to go into your performance options and turn up your output buffering to whatever your current cache settings are or your memory settings are. So Virtual Dub will use 32 megabytes of memory for output buffering. Next, you're going to want to go to options and performance and change your AVI output buffering to 32 megabytes. Change your wave input buffering down to the lowest setting it can be at and the audio buffering down to the lowest setting it can be at. Now, keep in mind that we're trying to get lossless. So we're trying to reduce the load and that includes stripping away everything that we can, including audio to make sure we don't drop any frames here. Now, of course, if you guys are trying to capture lossless for something like a YouTube video and you need the audio, you're going to want to go ahead and play with these sweat settings and see if you can get lossless with audio encoding going on. But for this demonstration, we're going to leave it off. The video buffering can stay at the standard 32 buffers and click OK. Next, you're going to want to go to the file menu and select capture AVI. Now for me, I already have my output or my input, I should say, already selected to the Elgato HD 60 and that's why you see it populate with something here. But the next step that you're going to need to do to make sure that that's working is you're going to want to go under the device menu and then select the device, your Game Capture HD 60 Pro. And this is actually the direct show. So that is something I need to mention. That direct show is a separate, a separate application that you're going to need to go and download. And you'll see here, I should have it in my downloads already. Let's see. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh, here we go. So right here. And this guide isn't really set to what you would want to use right now. Uh, I'm using a few different settings, but it's pretty close. And I'll also link this guide in the description below. So there's the link for the direct show. 
that you will need and then that will allow you to select the Elgato in virtual dub. Now under the capture menu you're going to want to select disk I.O. and you're going to want to set the chunk size to 8 megabytes and set your chunk buffer to 140 and you will want to disable the Windows write buffering and accept. You're also going to want to disable the write cache buffer flushing on your drive as well. So you would go into your device manager, expand out your disk drives, select the one you want to disable it for, right click, click properties, and then click your policies tab and uncheck the box for enable write caching on the device and click OK. Next you're going to want to go under your capture menu and settings and set your frame to 60 frames per second. Uncheck the box for wait for OK to capture. If needed, press OK and it should refresh the screen. Next under the capture menu you'll want to go ahead and check out your timing settings. And for your timing settings you want to ensure that drop frames when captured frames are too close together and insert null frames when captured frames are too far apart are both checked. Enabling these options allow you to see when frames are being dropped during the capture so this is very important because if it drops frames then your lossless capture is therefore invalid and you can't use it for any further analysis. So you click OK there and then you're going to want to make sure that the resolution settings are correctly set um, for the gaming system you're using and so you'll go under the video, mem video menu and select capture and then you will want to set the frame rate to 60. Use YUY2. Make sure that your output is correct. Click apply and OK. Now under video you will want to select set custom format and ensure that you have the data format for the device you are streaming from whether that's an Xbox or another PC so on and so forth. For example, if you're on a PC and you're wanting to know what your output is, you can actually go into your NVIDIA control panel or the Catalyst Control Center. You can go to Change Resolution and you can actually go down here and check what your output color format is as well as your range and so on and so forth. I do not know why this monitor is not set to 444 but I'm not going to change anything for fear of destroying my stream. Alright so now you want to check the frame rate for the capture in the bottom right corner which is down here. You can see that it's not right for us right now. So that's alright. Let's go back into virtual dub. Oh I forgot to save all that. You'll want to set the capture file I, have, I already have mine set, but this is where you will decide where to put it. And we will do test 2, for example, here for Halo and click Save. And then finally, you're going to want to go and click No Display. And this is just to make sure that we uh, have the least amount of overhead as possible. And then Capture and capture video. Assuming you weren't a dumbass like me and didn't try to capture the video while already using XSplit or OBS or something like that to also capture your monitor then you should have been able to capture it and then at that point you will have a lossless .avi file. So one of the things you can do is you can test it with VLC media player. It will not open without getting some extra codec add-ins in Windows Media Player and etc. As you can see here this is the file that we recorded and it should be good. Now if you guys want to know what the actual codec is that's simple enough to find out with the VLC Media Player. You can just do the media information and go to codec or just do the codec information. It'll take you right to this tab. Yeah you have your YUV422 and then you're good to go. Now to make sure that we didn't lose any packets is going to be the big deal here. Or to make sure we didn't have any drop frames I should say is going to be the big deal here. You're just basically going to want to reopen virtual dub and then you'll want to open the video file that you just recorded. So we're going to open this video file here. It's going to... it looks like there's some 
a missing index block, so we're going to have to wait for that to complete. Fortunately, I do have another video we can load in here that already has gone through that process, and this is the Final Fantasy clip. Now, for this, basically, what you're going to want to do is check for any dropped frames, and there should be a button down here that will take you to the next drop frame, which is that, that to the far right next to the frame and if you click that and it jumps to a frame then you know that you have a dropped frame and you are no longer lossless at this point and you need to recapture whatever you were trying to capture at that point. Now for me personally what I was doing this for was to get a lossless capture to then analyze not only the image quality but also to go into it further and take a look at the frame rate because I don't really have a way to uh, determine frame rate at this point for consoles. Now there is a tool called FCAT but unfortunately FCAT without actually running its and I'll show you guys here it's from Nvidia and you guys have probably heard of it before but unfortunately without being able to run its overlay on the test system, which would be the Xbox One. We can't install and run this overlay on it. Since we can't do that, we're not actually able to run this and get full details. And it's just gonna show what the frame rate of the actual AVI file is, which is gonna be 60. So unfortunately we can't do that. But if you're using a PC, I would recommend looking into FCAT and I'll probably do an FCAT tutorial later on down the road. But the purpose of this was to kind of determine what the frame rate for a console is. So there is another tool that I have installed and we'll go ahead and go to it real quick on my desktop and it's called Fizmo. So Fizmo, if we can open it, these are all the frames. And then you'll open the video file. So for example, this would be test one AVI and we would open it. And then this is where you can decide where you want to put the directory. So for us actually, we probably want to go ahead and create a directory to, let's just say FF15 and open. And at that point, it's going to push out all the frames, which it's, it already has done this project. Open video, test to open. That should decompress all my video. And you'll see over here that it's decompressing it. What that is actually doing is creating all of these frames here. Oh, that's what it was doing. It was trying to do the halo. Oh, it's doing the halo right now. Whoopsies. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> So it's rewriting all of these for Halo right now. Which actually, this is a super good example. So let's stop it real quick. Let's stop it. Because what I can show you here is what I want to show you. So if we go back into this folder, I don't know how many frames it goes before we hit. Uh, there we go. Here's Final Fantasy. And here is Halo. So Final Fantasy is a 30 FPS game. And Halo is a 60 FPS game. Now, since we recorded 60 FPS a second, that means that in theory, every single frame should be different in Halo. And as you can see, while I click through these frames, every frame is different. You can see the motion in the sword changing and so on and so forth, which is super awesome. So once it's done the same thing and analyzed the frame with Final Fantasy, you'll start to notice something, one frame. It's the same. On the third frame, it's different. So what you would do there is if you have two frames that are the same and you're recording at 60 FPS, then you would divide 60 by two and you would get the final result, which is 30 FPS, meaning that this game runs at 30 FPS. The issue with this is that we can't really get into finer detail like 59 FPS or 32 FPS, et cetera, et cetera. If we record lossless at 60 FPS, 1080p, the only frames we can tell if there's any difference is going to be any divisors 
you know, past half. So at half, because we would have to have a frame, an extra frame render every single time, or we would have to have an extra frame in between every single time to be able to analyze this. So if it's 60 and there's two frames and we divide 60 by two, it's 30. So we wouldn't be able to see anything between 30 FPS and 60 FPS. However, if we had three frames showing, we could then determine that we were running at 20 FPS. And if we had four frames showing, then we could determine that we're running at 15 FPS and so on and so forth. So we can go pretty, we can, we have a lot of numbers below 30 to run off of, but not very many, actually zero between 30 and 60. So that does create a problem with this form of analysis. Basically, all I can really tell you is if the game is running at 60 FPS most of the time, or if it knocks down to 30 FPS at some times. For example, in the beginning of the recording, there are some sections where Final Fantasy will be showing, like in cutscenes and such, to be running at 60 FPS. But in this case, when we're just sitting here doing normal gameplay, we can tell that every other frame changes, which means that we have 30 FPS. While on Halo, we can confirm that it's running at 60 frames per second with this method. What that means though for us in the future in determining and analyzing console frame rate, or for me personally, means that I would have to get a capture card that could capture ridiculous amounts of frames at a time. And then even that probably wouldn't be the best solution. So I have watched some of the Digital Foundry stuff and there is some stuff I want to look into, but I wanted to show you guys where I've come so far because it has taken a lot of work to get to this point and there is a if you guys want to mess around more in the fizz show software there is some more stuff you can do you can actually go ahead and set to color only the edges in and that makes it very very apparent when a frame has changed or not changed because basically it draws lines around everything and so you can very clearly see if the frame has changed or not if you're trying to get into like super deep analysis but this was a fun project i thought you guys might like it i'm going to check out fcat to get some better benchmarking information for you guys if possible. I know that it has some issues with AMD still and actually fully interpreting, you know, what you're actually getting. So I don't know how relevant FCAT is going to be at this point, but we'll see in the future. Let me know in the comment section below if you're interested. In I'm at least interested in, in principle or like to learn about it because it just like we learned here we were able to learn a few things just from going through this process and I do apologize that it took a little bit of time and we ran into some issues even while demonstrating which just shows goes to show you that this isn't an easy process this is very difficult stuff so the people that are doing it definitely go give them props Digital Foundry has their own custom software that they've done to analyze console FP and console resolution and yes console resolution will have to go over the effective resolution or the actual native resolution compared to what the render resolution is and how you get into pixel counting that stuff's intense too thanks for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe down below and i will see you next tuesday